feel like winter, doesn't it? It is winter. Because, oddly enough, it is winter. Yes. All right. And action. 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 So, so today we're messing with new tools, right? I mean, not new, new, but new, certainly new, new to, to us. To us. Uh, you've always used the flat ones. Yeah, I've and used I've them. I've seen these, but I hadn't really done anything with them. But we didn't have them. Joggles didn't have them before. No. And Joggles no. has them now, and we're mm -hmm. very excited. Yes. So we're, these are interesting little tools. They fit nicely in your hand. There's a variety of shapes and distances between the teeth. You have short ends and long ends. And even better, you can use these on a gel plate without any fear of damaging that surface. And because these are silicone, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, because these are silicone, all this paint will peel off. You know, you can scrape it off. I, I think it looks kind of cool to let it just accumulate. As long as you pick it out from between the teeth, then it's not going to affect anything that you do. Yeah, you, you I'll let you know them. if you have stuff between your teeth, Thank right? Thank you so much. <laughs> I just yes, you need to floss them. Yes, and don't go floss. around with paint in your teeth. No, that would be bad. Right? That would be bad. So we did, um, we're going to show you a couple of unique and interesting ways you can use these tools. And um, I, for one, created a sheet of um, gel printed paper because that's what I like to use in my collages. And you're going to see that I soak the color through the back. So now that this one is dry, I wanted to share and show you that when you tear a paper like this, you're going to get colored edges. You don't get white edges. You get blue edges, and how cool is that? So whatever color you bleed through the back, you get that color edges when you rip it for pieces of collage, and you don't ever have to worry about white edges. Isn't that awesome? And water and sky and all those kinds of wonderful things. Yeah, and that's definitely a function of the rice paper. Regular paper will not soak the color all the way through. You have to be using the specific rice paper that we're the, using. The, so the Yasutomo uh, 9x12 6H, I think it is, that's the one with the smooth on one side and that back that does all that absorbing. And that's the nice thing about the paper. It just is very, very absorbent. And sturdy. Yeah, so when we got this totally thing. wet, we could flip it over without it falling apart. And that's that's uh, that's significant as well. So it's gotta be a, a sturdy rice paper. Because I had lots of panel cards, so I played with panel cards. And there's a variety of patterns, and I'm going to not show these to you all now because you'll see them in my part of the video. But what you can do is create backgrounds. Now, these can be very strong backgrounds or they can be more subtle. But the cool thing is, is it really doesn't matter whether you've got strong or more subtle. And this one is a ghost print, and you can just, when you hold it the right way, you can just see a little bit of the lines that I had done. And I came in with, these are some of Elizabeth's, and I don't remember, these might be mixed up, whether they're the long stem botanicals or the long stem florals. But this one, I used the Tacky Wind Dry Gel Medium and foiled it. And this one, I just used regular old paint. And yes, there is in fact stickles on there because I look must, at that. I must, the stickles. just land on the floor. I must have stickles. Yes, look at so, how glittery it is. All that glittery goodness. Well, and I mean, could I have gone further with it? Yes, but I wanted it to be an, accent not dominate right so, just, a, just a a bit. little bit yeah just a little enough. bit of bling a little bit of bling yes indeed <laughs> well you want to show them how to do it yeah let's go do it all right all right we'll do it Today I am super excited to say that Barb and Joggles are now carrying these awesome Princeton Catalyst wedges. This is a tool that I've been using for a long time. Um, I use them primarily to scrape patterns into the gel plate, but uh, the ones with the teeth. But there's two with straight edges, and these are great to paint with, to apply paint with, to apply adhesive through a stencil, or um, a lot of different ways you can use this one. Also, this one I'll use to, um, if I want to glue down a large piece of paper, like to a background, I can use this wedge to flatten out the paper when I'm gluing it into the background. And the one with the uh, angled corner is also uh, fun for painting with uh, when you want to be able to paint with a smaller area than the side of this one. And when I say painting with, it's kind of similar to painting with a palette knife. Uh, but what's nice about these is that they're flexible silicone and they're weighted and wider right here. So they sit in your palm of your hand really nice. So so these two are for, um, I definitely use both of them, but for other purposes. But the ones we're going to feature today are the ones with the teeth 
patterns in them um, for scraping paint on the gel plate. So we've got um, four different patterns of teeth and they go along two sides. So you can scrape a wide section or a narrower section and um, you can wiggle them or crisscross them. And so I'm gonna give you a little suggestion of how you can make these really work well. So I am using the Princeton Catalyst wedges in uh, conjunction with my uh, Georgia O'Keeffe series mask that is called Music. All right, um, I'm using my uh, six inch Speedball Deluxe sprayer and we are always working on my favorite pad of Sketch Rice paper, the Yasutomo nine by 12. All right, so, and we've got some great colors of paint here today. I am using Naples Yellow Deep and Turquoise Blue and Primary Magenta. Okay. So the first layer, I'm gonna use the Naples yellow. And I'm using this on the bottom layer because it is an opaque paint color. And I want the rest of the layers to sort of show through. Um, so my opaque color is gonna be on the bottom. So I'm rolling that out with the six inch speedball brayer. It's not squeaking, so I grabbed the right one, Barb. Always a small miracle. <laughs> And now I'm going to take the wedge and I'm going to scrape a straight section of line. Then I'm going to grab a different pattern and this one I'm going to give a wiggle to. That one's cool because the distance between the teeth changes. It changes, yeah. It's smaller to larger. And then this one is the large. I'm going to give that one sort of a semi-wiggle. That's a big pattern. And then this one's got really fine pokey teeth. And we're going to give that one a little wiggle. And then you can go this way and drag through and you can come in different patterns and pull in different directions through the other stuff. This is kind of endless fun. You know what I just realized? The one with the pointy teeth? Yeah. Almost looks like marbling. Yes, it does. I was thinking, what does this remind me of? And that's it, the marbling. Yep. So now we've got this real cool kind of marbled, striped, uh, marked pattern, and we want to let this dry. So uh, I fan it a little bit. These are heavy body paints, so they don't dry uh, immediately. So you can either, you know, get a cup of tea, check your email, or fan it a little bit, try to be patient. That's not my, uh -huh. not one of my virtues, so. Silly girl. Yeah. And I'm drawing it because I'm gonna put a second layer of paint over the top of this before I put the stencil in it. We don't need it to be bone dry, we just need it to be dry enough that when we brayer another color over it, it's not gonna move. I think that's probably pretty good, what do you think? We'll find out if it's not. Yes, we will. Okay. So we're going to now put the primary magenta on top generously so we're not scrubbing it to spread it. Oh. We, we can tell you like that color. You've been using it a lot. Who's in charge of ordering paint around here? I don't know. Some crazy broad. <laughs> she needs to get on it. Right? Okay. So now we're going to bring out the squeaky brayer because I don't want to get this Naples yellow in, in my um, translucent pink color. So I'm just going to leave this here and start with a new brayer. I like to always have two brayers because this is a transparent color. So I don't want to stir up any of that yellow into my pink. All right, so we're going to get a nice coating of that over here. We didn't smudge anything, so that's good. And now I'm going to put the music mask right into that. And we're going to take the rice paper with the smooth side goes down onto the plate. And press. I'm gonna use my fingertips to get everything in between the spaces. Another tool that we've been using quite successfully lately is the Speedball Red Baron. Clever title. Um, you know, in it's winter here, the dry air heat may make your hands feel a little dry to be rubbing on the, uh, the um, 
back of the rice paper, which is a little uh, rough, I guess you would call it. It's not definitely not as smooth as that front side, and that's why the front makes such great prints is because it's ultra smooth. Yeah, it's not that smooth, so it can dry out your fingers. So I do a little barren, and then I go back in with my fingertips to get down in between all those really nice, fine, laser-cut shapes. And then with the heavy body paint, you really have to give it a little time to dry onto the paper so you can pull all of the paint off. So, you know, we can spend some time here chatting while we wait for paint to dry, right, Barb? Because <laughs> what could be better than chatting while we wait for paint to dry? What could be more fun? We could go watch the, the grass grow. Yes. We, you know, and this is not a case where you can bring out the hair dryer or the heat gun, really. Uh, okay, let's see what we got. Let's see. Not quite yet. I want to make sure it picks up all the paint so that we get that yellow stripe layer because right there it looked like that was hanging on. Patience, Barb. Uh, got none? <laughs> All right, that's looking pretty good, oh, but we're leaving a lot of it behind. Well, I know I can get that to pick up. But you could always do it in a second pickup print. Yes, I could do it in a second pickup print. This is true. I could put another layer of paint over it and pick that up the next time. Yeah, and if you pick the stencil up, you'll get that pattern too. This is true. All right. I'm trying to help you make lemonade out of a lemon here. Well, all right. So, all right, we're just going to, in the interest of time, we're just going to pull this. Okay. I mean, you got a chunk of it. It's not like you yeah. didn't get all of it. Yep. I got a chunk of it. But I'll show you the print that I made in preparation. It's very similar. We got a little bit more yellow off of it, probably because I let it sit there a little bit longer and it pulled up a little bit more of this. But, you know, Barbara and I had this conversation a few minutes ago. It doesn't matter. All the, the circumstances could be the same. You'll never duplicate this a second time. So, so now we're gonna set this aside because I have a fun additional technique to show you with this paper. And that's gonna be soaking color through the back so it will come through the white spaces. That's why I intentionally left white. So we're gonna bring the color through the back with some water and it's gonna come through the white areas and we're gonna get a really intense contrast of color. And that means that the rice paper is gonna soak up all that color. And when you use it for collage, which is what I use it for, when you tear the paper, you're gonna have colored edges because there'll be color all the way through the center of the paper. So what we're gonna do is flip it over and I need a paintbrush. To the right of the sink. That there was one there this morning. There it is. So we think we we're prepared and sometimes not so much. And we're not so much. So we're working on the nonstick craft sheet. So I'm just going to spray this all and get it nice and wet. And then I'm going to come out with my teal paint and a wide brush. that teal right there. It's, it's a good idea to spray the paper wet because then the paint spreads easier and it soaks through easier without so much effort. So we've now got wet paper face down on the craft sheet. If you don't have this nonstick craft sheet, you could certainly do it on a piece of plastic, but I do love this table covering. It does make life easy. Oh, I love it. it it's sold by the foot. Um, so it covers my entire work surface. All right. So we want to make sure this color gets soaked through. And, you know, while I'm thinking about it, the only caution that I would advise is you cannot brush and brush and brush in the same place because you'll peel the paper. Yeah, it does get a little slough that it pills and sloughs. Uh, so you don't want to keep brushing in the same spot. That is good advice. That's why I put a little water spray on the back of it because the brush glides over it easier when it's already wet. Okay, that's it. So now we're gonna pick this up. Oh, this is the moment of truth. Look at this. How wonderful that is. Wow. Oh my goodness. And look at how. Whoops. Let me get that in the in the shot, Barb. Look at how beautiful. Now that the color is soaked all the way through from the back, when I tear this, it's gonna have blue edges. And because I came from the back. The yellow is still vibrant yellow. If I had done this over the top, that yellow would not be anywhere near that bright. 
So I wanted to share with you some other prints that I made while prepping for this video. Here's purple with yellow with sky blue. Here's pyrrole orange with lime green. Here's greens with orange. So we've got a lot of beautiful papers where the color is soaked all the way through, a lot of different color combinations. And the reason why I chose the music Georgia O'Keeffe mask is because it uh, has big open areas so that I can see the shapes that I scraped with the catalyst wedges. So a big open areas to feature and really highlight and show your scraped patterns is a good idea. And that's why this stencil works well. Awesome. Awesome. Elizabeth has shown you the basics of working with the catalyst wedges and then really taking it a notch up several levels um, by incorporating that music mask. I'm just going to go for simple at this point. So I have panel cards and you know, you always have to remember that there's a limited amount of stuff that we have with us. So panel cards is one of the things that I could grab and it doesn't matter what shape your surface is, it's gonna work just fine. So this is probably my favorite one. You can see that it looks almost like a plaid. This one was some pink that I printed with the squiggles in it on top of some green. This one I couldn't even tell you. I think it was left over from this and there was some stuff on here. Sometimes simple stripes can be very effective. I think this is a pickup print or a, um, What's the word I'm looking for? Ghost print. Thank you, a ghost print from this. And again, stripes. But the cool part about this is, is I used the wedge and I think it's this one. So these are all numbered. This happens to be, I can't read it. I think it's, oh, it's number 04. It's 04 that the, the difference in the widths between the teeth is graduated. So it starts off really small and you can see that now and then it gets a little bit bigger, and that's how I accomplish this. So you don't have to get super fancy, you can. And then this was kind of grungy, kind of left over. You can see that it's this vertical line, and then I don't even know what the rest of this is. And as Elizabeth said, trying to reproduce any print is pretty darn difficult, and especially when you're just pulling ghost prints here and there. Oh, so, can I say something for a second? Of course you can. So these, are silicone so even though they get covered with paint the acrylic paint as you saw barb doing it peels or scrapes right off yeah, it'll come off so you don't have to worry about washing it right away however when you're scraping paint off the plate uh, if you wipe it on a paper towel just so the buildup doesn't prevent it from scraping that's a good idea but yeah. there's no problem letting the paint dry on them because it no. comes right off so. and they look very used when yeah. they get covered with paint. Yeah, sorry, that was just, no. I thought that would be a helpful sidebar. Absolutely, I'm glad that you mentioned it because it didn't occur to me. So all of these were done with a single color at a time, even though there might be multiple colors or like on this one where I printed the pink over the green. So because I like to make ombres, I have a couple of colors of the acrylics. So this one is greenish yellow. This one is turquoise green. The panel cards, are four inches wide. So I'm not even, this is an eight by 10 plate. I'm not even gonna go all the way across. I'm just gonna make a narrow ombre on one side and then go ahead and print it. So this is pretty straightforward. Oops, got another crumb there. I'm just gonna put some of the turquoise green down and then I'm gonna put some of the yellowish green. This is, I like this kind of acidy green color. It's something, I saw a car when I was out walking yesterday. I saw it again this morning and I thought, ooh wee, I would like that car. That is one of your very favorite it colors. It really is. If you so, ever want to send Barb a gift, <laughs> send her a t-shirt in that color. That's right. And make sure it's a super extra small. Oh, that might be a stretch. Just a small or a medium is fine. So the key with an ombre <laughs> is you have to run the brayer on it enough times that you get a chance for that paint to blend. That's the way that I try to do it. So I'm going to take Let's see, I think I'm gonna take the one with the varying widths and I'm gonna do this in two directions. So I'm gonna do vertical stripes. You know, let's grab this one. I'm gonna do vertical stripes with this and then I'm gonna go across and I'm gonna do wiggly ones. So I'm just gonna come up here and sometimes they're straight and sometimes not so much. And that's probably enough to cover that panel card, but if it's not, I don't care. So let's come in with this one, and this is the wedge that is number 02. And I'm gonna do some wiggling here. 
because I think that that's fun. I'm not even gonna wipe this one off in between. Now, I could do straight if I wanted to, which is just a different look. It really is, and the only way to figure out is to play. You just gotta give yourself the permission to play. So I think I'm gonna print this on craft. I think it's gonna look nice with both of those colors. I want my ombre kind of in the middle, so I'm gonna put that there, and I'm going to grab, well, let's see what we have here. I'm gonna use this and just paper. <laughs> just go ahead and press this. And let's see what this looks like. Ooh, see, isn't that fun? That. I like the fact that the craft shows through it. I like the fact that it affects the color just a little bit. You can see more of the craft in places where I scrape the color off a little bit more. So that also is something that will affect your final outcome. The deeper you dig into the, pit, into the plate, if you will, the more you're liable to see the color of whatever the surface is that you're printing on. The nice thing is, is that these are silicone. You cannot hurt the plate. They're not going to damage the plate. You, it's not like you'd use a knife or anything like that, but something that's sharp and pokey is a problem for the plate, not these babies. They work really, really well. And then from here, someplace, I have, let me step to the side, I took a couple of these, and again, keeping in mind that we have limited supplies with us, we have some of Elizabeth's long-stemmed florals, botanicals, I'm not even certain which ones these came from. So I wanted you to see that this is actually a very light ghost print. There's a little bit of design on here, but this one was much stronger, and I foiled this. This is deco foil with the Crafters Workshop Tacky Wind Dry Medium, so you can create on top of surfaces, whether they're really dark like this, or they're far more subtle. Those look great. Thank you. Yeah, I'm at the point now where I'm snorting when I laugh. We yes. Have, we well, reach new lows. That, that's a comfort level. That's fantastic. That's right. Yes, right? it is. is yes. It? Yes. Yeah, I can snort now. Cause, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> that's how close we are. Yes, indeed. We right? are. Right? Catalyst wedges. These are not limited to use on a gel plate. You can use them for many other kinds of things. So, yeah, you can scrape paint directly off the paper. Um, I've done that before. You put paint down, you can scrape through it right on the paper. And I have friends who are potters who use them to add oh, texture and pattern into clay. That makes perfect sense. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So the possibilities are endless. They are. Well, you don't use air dry clay, but that's something pretty common in the mixed media world. You use air dry clay, and that you can add texture with these. I can't use any more uh, mediums. My, no, you're my, at your limit. My, I'm at my limit of mediums. My house is overflowing with products. I can't get into air dry clay. All right, I won't force you. You could buy me something made out of it. Okay, yeah, I'll That's take it. Let, let me get on that for Okay. <laughs> All right, then. All right. Yeah, we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.